Congress holds its first hearings Monday on the Gunwalker scandal that CBS News first uncovered back in February. Officials at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms encouraged gun shops to sell thousands of assault rifles and other weapons destined for Mexican drug cartels. CBS News investigative correspondent Shell Atkinson is in Orlando with the latest on the story that she first broke. Shell, good morning. Good morning, Chris. The idea was to let the little fish go to try to catch the big fish, but insiders say in the process, many lives were needlessly put in danger. Last June, about nine months into the ATF operation known as Fast and Furious, suspects had purchased 1,608 firearms for over a million dollars in cash transactions at various Phoenix area gun shops. According to internal documents obtained by CBS News, ATF already knew that 179 of those very weapons had turned up at crime scenes in Mexico and 130 in the U.S. Yet ATF allowed some of the same suspects, accused of being middlemen from Mexican drug cartels, to continue to buy and transfer assault weapons. Sometimes agents say they videotape the buys. Oh, he's got a whole bunch of cases. But didn't interdict the guns. Documents indicate intentions were good. The idea was to allow the transfer of firearms to pinpoint big cartel crooks rather than the small-time traffickers supplying them. They want to change the dynamic and truly go after the kingpin. So give the kingpin something that they can't resist, this flow of weapons over 15 months, and then track them, find them, and take them down. But several ATF agents strongly objected to letting any guns walk. Actually, Darren Gill was ATF's lead official in Mexico during Fast and Furious. We're in the, the business of interdicting weapons. We're not in the business of putting weapons out there for criminals to use, and that's what happened in this case. Sources say putting electronic trackers on the guns usually wasn't possible, and the number of weapons led onto the street in Fast and Furious grew to more than 2,500. One suspect allegedly purchased 20, even 40 weapons at a time, at least 220 over the course of about a year. That included 178 AK-47 type assault rifles and three Barrett 50 caliber rifles. Using our sources and reviewing documents provided to us over the past four months, we've been able to piece together a disturbing picture of where fast and furious guns have turned up so far at a dozen seizures and crime scenes along the U.S. border and in Mexico. Most notably, two turned up last December at the murder of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry in Arizona. And documents obtained by CBS News indicate some of the weapons were recently found at a drug cartel shooting of a Mexican government helicopter. Even insiders appeared awed by the scale. Six months into the investigation in March of last year, a senior ATF attorney under the Justice Department commented, every time I read this case, I'm amazed at the amount of firearms we're talking about. Acting ATF Director Kenneth Melson and his deputy William Hoover were said to be briefed weekly on the investigation. ATF Special Agent John Dodson worried about all those guns hitting the streets. I don't think anybody really fathoms how long we're going to be dealing with this. I mean, the gun is not going to go away. It's not a one-time use. Dodson and two other ATF agents will testify at a hearing next Wednesday. Monday's hearing will explore whether the Justice Department obstructed justice in withholding information from congressional investigators. That agency says it's cooperating with the Inspector General's probe. Chris? Cheryl, the ATF's policy of kind of clipping the little guy in order to land the big fish, according to your report, ha has translated to way too many guns on the street. So, I mean, is there any proof that this actually worked in any instances? Not yet. Uh, the idea was to try to take down a major cartel. That didn't happen. Insiders say they still hope that evidence that they've gleaned from some of this operation that went on over 15 months may eventually help do that. So far, it has not done that. And the argument on the other side from the insiders who did not approve of the strategy said, you never let one gun walk. It's too dangerous, even if you're trying to get the big fish. All right. CBS's Cheryl Atkinson in Orlando for us this morning. Cheryl, thank you.